Hallo und herzlich willkommen bei Adobe Live. Heute. Englisch. Oh mein Gott, I messed this up. <lacht> Hello and welcome. Oh mein Gott. <lacht> Crazy. We just talked about this. Hello. I will just start again. Hello and welcome. It's good to see everyone and especially you, Christoph. Um, such a lovely afternoon. Yes, definitely. Here yes, it's quite hot, but in my in my basement office is like like freezing. So I, I try to. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Um, we both German speakers. So our uh, native language is German. That's why I had the little um, <clears throat> pickup now with a German switching from it to English. But the stream today will of course be in English. So everyone who's here, welcome. Hello also uh, to everyone who's in the chat. It's lovely to see you. I hope you have plenty of questions for Christoph because today will be all about the role of AI in modern design. Christoph, um, we met for the first time uh, about a year ago at off in Barcelona, where, of course, before your books are uh, very well known, but we met in person there. And ever since, um, I keep following you on social networks and seeing updates. And since recently, you are now principal creative art at Jung von Matt von Necker, which is a company in Germany and also very well known. What are you doing there and how did this all start? Yes, hi. Um, the the main or the basic uh, task i am doing at jung von mott is uh, to to look at the at the craft and at the design output and i try to for example like having the ai now as a tool uh, i always try to ramp up the colleagues and 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 implement this also in the in the workflow and as you said when we first met at off barcelona last year I think this this AI topic just was completely out, not yet in focus. So nobody was talking about it. And I can also remember that also for myself, I, I was not quite convinced that this is something to be until I think it was in, in end of last year, like December or January, that things got a bit more yeah defined and and i think we at jung von mott we tried from january on to to get hands on this new topic which is i think here to stay it seems so there have been plenty of things happening pretty much in the last months ai or the topic itself has been exploding and it's been there for quite a while but it seems like now it's there for commercial use and also pretty much accessible for anyone also for people who did not really somehow work in the tech field before it's a lot more approachable i would almost say yeah because it, it's in, in in so many different fields and this is also because of the of the technique which lays behind it so this this language learning models they are from, from from different topics like you can look at chat gpt and 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 stuff like this so and then every time this these learning models improve so everything in this in this ai era improves or if you have a look at the at your twitter feed where where you have like hundreds of new tools every day and and you it's quite easy to lose track here and i think at the end of the day you have to to always at the moment we are in, in, a, in a constant beta version of everything so you have to be your own tailor of of your, the tools you use and and i have seen that i need a tool for this and for that and and but the, the creative suit from adobe is always like a core element i can align these new tools around so for my for my workflow I pretty much have the same feeling. And as you mentioned, things went very fast. We're still at the beginning. And I actually can't wait uh, for more things to come. And I think we're really close to the next update. So anyone who's watching today, um, stay tuned. Uh, there will be more very soon. Um, maybe a quick question to everyone in the chat. Have you used any AI tools so far? And if yes, 
which one maybe let us quickly know because of you tried plenty of them yes and, and i have also the, uh, we can have a look later on i have made some some comparisons also because they are quite different at the moment as i said because five months ago there was a completely different game than it is today or in the next five months from now so so this topic is, is very new and and volatile how do you say so it's it's, it's quite <laughs> rearranging and what we can do today i think is only giving a snapshot of of what what we have at the moment so and um yeah perhaps we can now start with the with the keynote I have prepared. Of course, let's dive in. So, uh, uh, whilst you're opening the keynote, we have plenty of answers in the, in the chat. Lots of people say they tried Firefly, of course, but there are some very eager ones who tried multiple tools like DALI, of course, ChatGPT. Um, and we have all you were saying, it feels like his life is always in beta. Um, well, some people are always in beta and some struggle with picking the uh -huh. right language. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. But uh, Christoph, the stage is yours. I will, I will lean back and enjoy the show now. Do you see this now? Like, let's have a look into the past because as we have seen from the, from the books I, I am writing or I wrote, I always want to to put things into a into a relationship with what has been before to better understand uh, where we are at now and and so many cutting edge technological developments being made today have their roots in the past and I want to to give a shout out to the new tendencies movement from the 1960s everybody who is interested in this can make a, a deep dive on Google or something and uh, also these techniques back then where the computation was quite new um, help us to understand the present and, and and build towards the future because they quite did nothing else like AI does now by uh, comparing different pattern or like Rafik Anadol says so data becomes a new language between the machines but as humans we have to learn this language as well and this is a quite good example for what the interface of these um, AI image generating tools at the moment is, it's like a, it's like a chat line. So you talk to the machine via via your chat bot, and it's not the future, as I said, but the past we are looking at, and what artificial intelligence does today. Pattern recognition was already practiced by Herbert Franke or Vera Molnar in the 1960s. Here we have an image of her, and this shall remind us that technological progress is not an uh, uh, endeavor by, by single ones, but a, a co collaborative effort. And, and you see this also at the moment with all of these uh, tools, open source, so everybody's trying to, to get into a new direction. And at the moment, this is just another starting point we should take the next step from. And, the first time I was seeing or where it came to my mind that this is something new uh, was a uh, work by Mario Klingemann, <coughs> uh, who was very early on experimenting with AI art. And uh, this was during the launch of the NFT platform called um, Ver. I have a problem here. It was in the beginning of 22 with the, the platform Versum and I was invited to collaborate with um, Hero of Detroit Underground doing the token Zero, and therefore we were in contact with all of these uh, Genesis artists and, and he said words behave like pixels and the sentences like pictures and this is exactly what we do by, by prompting these images. <laughs> and, and at this time if you remember the the nfts like like foundation super rare whatever so people minted like artworks from the from the use of, of generative code or, or animation videos and then i think there was a shift at about this time 
And at the moment, when you look at at nowadays um, streams from artists like here from Kiro, they use AI art to to make their expressions to 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 express their their artistic value. I think so. And it's always hard to understand, but we just make a few slides of the background <laughs> knowledge just touching and this for example would be a very deep nerdy chart of of uh this language models and and image generating uh solutions by um, you find on, on on google but i think you have if you have some time you can have a look at it and what I recommend is this uh, The AI Dilemma by Tristan Harris and, and Raskin. They make a presentation uh, which is indeed uh, worth watching on YouTube. And in a nutshell, they <laughs> explain all of these connections like we have here. So we have, uh, they say, a different language in the DNA, a different language in the robotics, a different language at the internet itself and a different language of, of images and all these languages can be translated into each other and um, what we focus on now is the image language here so the the, the context of, of the the whole thing which which started i think in in back in 2017 with these first models and now came to to life like in the end of 21 beginning 22 then last year in august i can remember it was not quite there but i think from this january on it it was quite quite a thing so in the in the first chapter i want to have a, a general look at how the process of creating an AI generated image might be so starting so this today is not a is not a prompt show doing the best prompts but showing different techniques of how to to work and how to implement this new uh, image generating into your daily working process if you want to so um, we, we we always start with the underlying core idea and the, the syntax of this prompt, which is always like a sentence, uh, has to be derived from this idea. Then the machine creates numerous variations of images. Then you are the curator of your own stuff. So you have like 200 images to, to select from. And uh, in the end, you can be either make an iteration or, or go on in the next steps with your editing or, or whatever you want so i made a sketch so we start from this super detailed sketch i have made this should be a <laughs> like a like a tree house or something i want to have a tree house which is looking like a like a lounge or like a like a bungalow if you want to <laughs> then from this idea from this image idea we have to formulate our prompt uh, which means I have to define the, the most important subjects like the tree house here, the forest in the background. I want to have a lake where the tree house is and I want to have some birds in the sky. So this is then my, my content. So I can divide between subjects and, and adjectives. So I have just defined these four subjects and I want now to have this on, on dark concrete, like a brutalist architecture, like huge windows, whatever you want. And in the next thing you, you have to formulate the prompt. I always start my prompts with establish because I, I want the machine to do something. This is just for uh, personal style. So. And in the end, or in the beginning, you have now like many different variations of, of this generated treehouse. And then you can 
be your own curator because the the model provides nearly infinitely e examples of due to the the algorithm which lies behind we have a look later on and and so we can we can select one and compare so we have here the birds and the sky the lake the trees and the, the house. And if you look at the process, it, it's like this. So you have the first step is coming up with the idea, the concept sketch, scribbles, iteration. So this will never change because the AI is just a tool you have to use to come up with your uh, best solutions for, for the project the realization. Then the second part is then the, the analyzing of the idea, describing the image, defining the subjects, the hero, the antagonists, the adjectives, the look, the style, the resolution, whatever. Then you write this in the prompt. You have to formulate the prompt in the, in the language which your, your model is, is understanding. So there are also at the moment like, like different differences but I, I think as I said before the, at the moment we have different directions so I think next year things have more settled and then you have a few of yeah like two or three which which have because it's, it's always the model how good it is in 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 the execution but what I have seen when I was doing the workshops it's also a question of how good the interface is so, so this, these are more the parameters we have to watch out in the, in the future. And the next step would then be the curation and then it goes to the result. <laughs> and we are currently like uh, experiencing an, an exponential growth. Like we said, just like starting from 2020, 2017, whatever. So I can I can still remember last year um, in August, I gave this interview for, for Accenture and and I, I mentioned the AI topic, but it was just in a, in, a, in a one sentence because it I think it was not really significant at this time. So so how so you can be mistaken quite easily. So um, a colleague of mine, Jean Christophe Nau, working at, at Samsung, uh, is also very deep into the subject, and he made a comparison. So this is like an impressive example of this development over the last yeah not even a year like a half a year so you have on the left side you have the one one model from the same prompt from july 22 and on the right side you have march 23 so you you shift in expression also from from a yeah beautiful illustration if you want on the left to a, to a post photographic style within six months, if you want to, and and <clears throat> so this was now the yeah the beginning of of my presentation. I wanted to show how this thing works in a bit, and and in the next part, if you want, we can have some some looks at at real examples. So how you how you can proceed with the AI and implement it into your workflow. Yes, we should definitely have a look at that. Um, you had so many interesting things in your presentation so far already. Should I keep my questions for later or do you want me to ask some of them right now? We might derail massively. Yeah, perhaps we, we, we jump through the next chapter and then we, we make a few questions because Perfect. this now it's like a, like a proof of this this concept established here, and so enough of the te theory right now, and and <laughs> we we jump into the the working of the AI models and analyzing the different models and and so on. So um, we start here with the, this is an example of of doing a yeah like a design of an, an object, the console or whatever you want. So we also have like here on the left side, the analyzing of, of this object, like the, the subject description. So I have written like a game console mod, like a modification. Then we have like PlayStation 1 very strongly in here. Or if you also want 
teenage engineering style toys or if you have the Dieter Rams aspect. And on the right, you have the adjectives. So we want a medium format, a minimalist poppy subject, then futurist minimalism, light gray, and yeah, some other keywords you want. And if you just prompt now, you have already again different solutions to choose from. And on the next slide, we have a look at how these solutions come to life. So I call it always like a, a model black box. So it's always starting from a very blurry first, um, like 15% ready uh, starting point. And then the model is comparing its patterns and exchanging things and leaving things like they are until the whole object is like done. So you can also follow Nick St. Pierre on, on Twitter. He had recently made this um, explanation of the of the different seeds, for example, from Mid Journey. So there are like 4 billion, uh, 200 million plus something seeds in Mid Journey. So one seed is always one of these blurry starting point. Uh, images and each of these seeds generates like four images so you you see you have like a infinite possibilities of of doing images and what i also like if you if you select some image now and you go into adobe illustrator and make some some logo type on it and and some little things so this then becomes much more realistic or vivid if you want to so like some some crazy devices also here and uh, you can also create then your a little series of your devices and and this also can lead us <coughs> because this is like a mock-up so you can you can do mock-ups with your ai tool and this is also very interesting i think for um doing brand design so because as a, as a designer you have to do brandings corporate designs whatever and it is always like a pain to come around the corner with always the same mock-ups like business cards iphone backgrounds out of home underground state always the same underground station poster <laughs> so this is quite, quite boring also but with the ai you have the possibility not only to to generate new mock-ups but also make mock-ups which are um, relevant in the in the terms of style for your for your logo so and yeah, yeah you, you can also put the theme here so i have made this like for detroit underground release and and then you have the idea so this logo should only be on transparent acrylic material so and and searching these images is is not possible i think so you have the the advantage of of doing of prompting them and then placing your an illustrator whatever made logos on these objects to to convince the client but this is another example like here the logo from Kiro we can put on a on a prompted hoodie or like on some some dust explosion as a as a mood image or you can put it on a huge container or even on a skateboard so you see and and, and all of these images have one one language of of design also so you can now focus on much better on on the expression of your of your brand in the end so and another example would be going outside so after now uh, considering this this process of generating images and and, and post-production by using um, the adobe creative suite uh, we can also have a look at how do i tune my prompt because it's a language model and the prompt as i have experienced i'm all and only talking about my own subjective experience today because i think at the moment, there is not the, the one truth of, of AI. So everybody's experiencing something 
in in his yeah little bubble yeah and and for this we, we step now outside and have basketball court here so we have also the subject this description now the basketball hoop and the, want some some urban landscapes and now add some adjectives like emotional intensity or playful and ironic and the color grids and and, and some some run down elements also so this would then be the first draft um, it offers me and on the right you see it does actually not really understand how to play basketball because the the hoop is like facing the wall and, and it should stand like turned 180 degrees but i think this is quite the problem of an early model and these images are now created with a so-called one-line prompt and i always use <laughs> these to get started and then i i take this one line prompt and put them into the chat gpt and and expand them to like 200 words because the more descriptive this prompt is the more descriptive are also the images as you can see here so i have much more detail here much more depth and it lo really looks like a like a photography so this is then the new prompt and um i think you have like approximately on 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 firefly you have like 150 words for for a prompt for example and in other models you have like 4000 characters but at some point i think the the algorithm is losing track so i always i always shift between 100 and 200 words and so if you directly compare this now you have on the left you have a one liner and on the right you have like 200 words you you see the gain which uh, which chat gpt enhancement in the description because i always say please rewrite this prompt by using very illustrative very metaphorical and and very blooming for example language like in 200 words and i directly take this outcome from gpt into the prompt and another thing i like very much is playing around <laughs> like uh, key visuals for let's say a, a new record coming out which is being released soon so and and this is the final prompted image i i was just playing with a woman dressed in white and some pets and dogs and and gave give this now like a pale palette and some gothic realism and some poodle punk attitude and which <laughs> then leads to the different suggestions i get so then you are your own curator again and i also place now the the logos of the of the record or the the artist onto these images and and quite like the outcome i also added some some noise in in photoshop and then i prompted a mock-up for the poster and this then yeah would be the image you have in your presentation completely generated uh, the images with ai and and this means for our daily business when our working process like for example consists of these three steps like the ideation coming up with the idea the iteration or the testing and the execution like in in my case now um so so these always each of these ones take a lot of time so if i add ai to one of them i can simply invest more time in the other ones so so this is like shifting your working process and I think with the help of AI, you always have like a better outcome. And I call it the AI is your companion because it's your support and it still is a tool. And, and so without explaining the, the uh, without prompting the, the right idea, so the machine 
will not do anything at all because it's just your your tool and and what we have seen in in the previous examples um with the ai generating mm, tools alone this is not sufficient sufficient so i i call it like bundling so we always use a tool to generate the images we use gpt to refine the prompt and then we use illustrator photoshop after effects whatever <laughs> and um this can be seen like here um it's just a small glimpse of, of what current programs are available um so you have like here Lightroom, After Effects, Firefly, then you have all these image generating tools and the video tools and the text tools for the content. And depending on each um, project, I can then combine these. So this means <laughs> if I'm doing a, like you, you've just seen this campaign for this new record, I, I choose ChatGPT to optimize the prompt. Then I make Midjourney and Firefly to do the, the generating of the images. I can then also go into Photoshop and combine these images. Then I do uh, Illustrator for the logo types. And then I have Lightroom to optimize um, the image itself. Or if we want to have some video, generating AI, we can also use in the near future, I hope, Adobe Firefly, uh, Kyber or Runway, and then we can use After Effects for controlling and, and Adobe Premiere then for, for editing. And this means that I, I firmly believe that when Firefly is released, now as a beta, soon as an alpha version, it will be capable of uh, addressing a significant portion of, of this these tools we are bundling at the moment, you know? And, and, and so it will be perceived, for example, like a, a serious tool, which has a, a very wide range of scope. Um, people also can, can trust because we, we, all, we all have, have done some workshops recently and, and we set up different machines with different models. And what we have witnessed is that people stick to Adobe Firefly because of the interface and the trust in the, in the brand. So this was quite interesting because all of these other <laughs> language programming models are a bit too difficult to get the ramp up because people are motivated in the beginning and want to take part but there is no ramp up. So they have very high difficulties in, in, in get things going without the, the portion of, of nerdism, you know. <laughs> so, so, uh, I, I quickly have a question here because it's, it suits the topic perfectly. You just mentioned the advantages of Firefly and other tools. How do you personally feel about uh, the, the data Firefly and all the others are trained on? Because with the question in the chat, um, how you feel about uh, platforms that train their models without licensed work? And yeah, a... this is quite interesting because um, you have like different objects being trained by the internet, so they use everything. They can get their algorithms on. <laughs> so, but they are optimized in, in visualizing, but you can not use them going out with this work. So you have to to find a workaround. And, and, and then um, I think Adobe Firefly is now trained on like few 10,000 images with a line of the Adobe license stock. And I think here you have not in the beta, but then in the alpha version, uh, the possibilities also to to use these images. Um, but I think this is a, a huge question. We also had a discussion at the AI panel in Prague recently with with some lawyers also and, and some people from industry. But this 
still has to be defined. So this is just like a, like a guess at the moment. Yeah. I would agree. I think it makes me feel a lot more comfortable as an artist to know that Firefly is trained on licensed work and also that Adobe is strongly reinforcing the content authenticity um, initiative with, uh, I think, about a thousand brands that joined already. And I think it's 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 a good sign for all art artists and the value of their work. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one other question? Or... Yeah, there are more. Um, we have now a question from Roland. He says he doesn't use, for example, Midjourney because scrapping data, which can be questionable in terms of violating intellectual property and styles of artists, he doesn't agree on. Um, but of course, uh, when it comes to prompting, you were very specific about the process of doing this. And we all know um, ideation processes. And we saw now, I think for, for me, it's the first time that I see someone showing the process for how to use AI in a structured way, because what most people do is uh -huh. open the tool, jump in, prompt something and then leave again. But in your case, it's now understandable. Um, so that's definitely a good thing. There was another question, uh, which was about how do you feel about negative prompting? So not also not only saying what you'd like to see, but also what you would not like to see. So avoid uh, things. Think... Yeah, I've, I think I, it also depends on on the on the style of because there are many different styles of prompts. So you can have an index prompt where you name the subject, you write subject, uh, and then uh, name the these. And a, a negative prompt, I think, is only necessary if you have like a, like a very lyrical descriptive like uh, if you have a prompt like a poem because then the machine is also building images on on the decisions of randomness and to control the randomness again you have to to use these um, these negative prompts or like we have here for example this this fashion campaign i made as an example for for writing a, a very broad outcome of, of a prompt. So, so the core prompt is very, yeah, you, you get a lot of different results from, from this one prompt actually. And on here, I also showed the, the way of using the, the tools on, on the left column. So we begin again our core prompt and modify this in, in chat GPT. Then we use Lightroom again to, to make the image, as you see, a bit more intense. Also Photoshop in the way you want. And I think this, this controlling of the, of the image is always still better to be done by human, like a hybrid, <laughs> like in a hybrid way. And, and last but not least, you jump into Illustrator and put on some fancy uh, looking logos and copy. And what Lightroom does, if you zoom in, you have like a high quality of an, of an image also generated by the use of these tools. And, and this then would be some examples which are all done with the same prompt. So. So this prompt also leaves a lot of, of possibilities. And what I also like to, to explore, looking at, at the first book I have done, like Analog Algorithm, I call it Math Core, because the core of the prompt is, is a mathematical description. So you have this, this fusion of, of image and calculation. So I have here made three prompts uh, which are very interesting because they define oh, only by naming their their subject they define a form in the prompt. So you have the on the top you have the geodesic dome by Bookminster Fuller, and then on the left you have these endless Mandelbrot sets, and on the on the right you have these Bernoulli chains. And if you use these as a as an adjective. You can create like spheres which are uh, looking like they are coming from a 3D printer. 
So these are the, the different outcomes. And what now is quite interesting is you can not only use them on a sphere, but you can also use them on a model. So you can have these calculations also in fashion, because what we see here now is that the machine is applying these patterns on the on the kind of fabric and on the hair and in the background. And then you can also control how much, because on the left you see you, the calculation is dominating. Then in the middle you have like this 50-50 this, this of, of figure and, and, and mathematics. And on the right you only have some laser lines of, of this uh, calculated pattern over it. And uh, this, there's all has been a challenge by by Renault. I think this was the first uh, AI campaign uh, rolling in in January. It was called like reinvent Twingo, so thirty years of this uh, vehicle. And you should uh, prompt um, a vision of the car. And I just used this technique of of math core to to also come up with these images where the the calculated pattern is on the car and around the car. And this leads us to the next step of comparing these uh, models. For example, <laughs> here you have a, a good overview on the left. This would be a uh, stable diffusion. And on the right, you have like a mid journey. So here you see it, the, the more input a model has or is trained on, the, the better is the outcome. But you have then, on the other hand, these, these topics we just discussed, plus the, the use of the interface, for the, which is very important for the ramp up of, of bringing people to this, uh, to this new way of, of, of visualization. And so quickly now, uh, we look at the different models, like for five minutes. So we have the test prompt and we will run this on four different models like Dell E2, which was a very important one in the beginning of this uh, development. And we have Leonardo, which uh, has different stable diffusion uh, models included, Midjourney and Firefly. So we start with the Dell E2, which deeply impressed us at the beginning of the AI era. So it comes with an interface prompt input line and, and several default buttons. Uh, the next one would be Leonardo AI, which also has a uh, based on, on, on stable diffusion. Um, mid journey, of course, which is very difficult to, to handle because you only have one line to enter the full prompt. And then we have uh, Firefly, which comes with the cleanest interface and the simplest usability as we have seen in the workshops. And in the, the past months, like I, I made a workshop at Jung von Mott and then in, in Prague at the university. And during these workshops, this, as I said before, it was interesting that there were like four or five, six pet people around this one laptop and, 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 and using all of these sliders and, and predefined settings and, and, and stuff. And this is quite easy then to, to give them a ramp up and because once these people are have had touch with this uh, subject they go for their sel themselves so they they can proceed and and explore so this would be the the overview of of these four uh image results so we have like um firefly and a mid journey which uh, have like a very dense information, also prompting a background. And, um, but we have to, to see this is only a snapshot. So this would have looked like half a year, one year ago, it, this would have not been here. So, and we do not know what will be in, in half a year. So, so these models are constantly being trained. And I think these two um, are quite solid to, to, to go on with, with the working. So this, this would be the comparison of the, there's a lot more available at the moment, but I think these four represent a, a good snapshot of, of what is going on at the moment. It's 
Very interesting. Quick question. Do you have the feeling that all of them somehow have their own style? Yeah, this is also this is also at the moment I think we are like 60-80% of of the whole. So these models are still being trained and it also depends on so I, I how close the prompt is to the trained asset. So if I do a prompt in in Firefly, which is very close to portraits or like uh, landscape uh, things like this, uh, less uh, less uh, fantastic. So you get very impressive results. And on the other hand, if you go and want to have like a, like an illustration or like a, like a painted version, so so you always have to decide uh, what what direction you want to go and. Perhaps we can have a look at the, I have challenged Firefly here a bit with the chat GPT uh, prompt tuning and there we see it quite well. So this would be then in chat GPT expanding the, the prompt and this says our test prompt techno cyberpunk and with seven words, 60 words and 100 words. And what I find very interesting here is another prompt where you can also see a change in detail as the the posture of the of the astronaut over the the course of the like to 100 words so this this is really interesting to see how how much impact this this language model has on the outcome yeah so and now if you if you fast forward like half a year can't, you can't tell what, what then would be the outcome with the same prompt, yeah. First, I think it's, uh, yeah, as I said, it's the beginning, but still, um, the world is open to to <laughs> even more to come and even more styles. Um, speaking of style, Sean just asked if you used photo as a starting style in Firefly for this for this generated image. No, no, I, I, I think I barely use photographs as a as a starting point because, what what I do perhaps is like letting a photo interpret by the machine so I can, I can reprompt them and and use these. But I, I all, uh, I'm doing this like now for for six or seven months, and I think I. I have a huge uh, text document where all of my little tools, assets, and 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 words are in, and and I like to to generate the prompts like manually, and which is also interesting is that we had a, another workshop in in Prague um, at the Movo conference where we wanted to challenge this idea of bundling and, and going from, from two dimensions into three dimensions. And, and when we were planning this workshop in March this year, so there was absolutely no solution. And, and when we had the workshop in, in three months ago, three weeks ago, so we had like two different options to choose from. So you see this, this development. So if you want, we can have a look at this now as a last point of the presentation. So <laughs> this was the, <laughs> these images are also uh, generated. So this is a blending of me on the left with uh, Paul Stanley, the singer of Kiss and uh, Gene Simmons then blended with Paul Hayes on, on the right. And um, so it, it was also in, in this workshop, we give the people a, a little ramp up of uh, like we just did, explaining the the key facts and 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 had the the multimodal access points and let the people explore under our consultancy. And in this workshop, uh, we wanted to prompt a, a three dimensional object, like we had. Uh, also support from form labs with their 3d printers and we had now these uh, two different 
um, possibilities. One of these was a bundling of um, the, I think Blender is a is a, a royalty free uh, program in, in in for three dimensional visualization. And this understands like a Python script. And then the simple is that we find uh, a plugin written by Aria. Uh, which is generating a, a Python script in GPT. And so you can actually like on the right, you can prompt this object. And the second idea was <coughs> that we had an experiment. We used Firefly to make a geometric monochrome floral pattern masks. And these then we extruded in, in a tool before we vectorized it in, in Illustrator. And then we can do a, a 3D print of this prompted image, if you want. And this then was also my inspiration for doing prompts of 3D printed lookalikes. And then I again came to my math core um, syndrome and um, I applied these forms onto these. These are all made with Firefly now. And uh, the next step was then to apply these 3D printed looks onto a vehicle, which then could be great fun, uh, making also again your own production of dummy cars, or then you can go more detailed parameters, or you can do X-Wing fight, because as soon as you have the prompt syntax, you can exchange the subject. And, and there is the BMW, BMW i8, and as a resume, we can say that we can do like out of home mock up key visuals, we can do industrial design, mm -hmm. we can do campaign visuals, we can do brand design mock ups or experiments with surface and style simulation. And this says that the role of AI in modern design would be AI will become your companion if you want it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Huge final words. But so I, because I, I think it's, you are still responsible for the conceptual creative process, the ideas and, and the visions and the, the AI, the different AI tools which are now coming up. <laughs> just give you a, a support in 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 lifting the edge of, of visualization or, or output I think so this is this is quite interesting at the moment and so everybody who is now like feeling ramped up can go ahead and try for yourself because it's very cool I agree. It is definitely a chance to, first of all, increase the own potential and skill set. And of course, to discover new worlds, um, because it's never been easier to just try so many different things in such a short time. And there's also a comment in the chat that one year of eye image development is just two to four weeks in the real world. I think we all saw how fast things went with the whole AI topic recently. Yeah, and as I said before, you, you have to constantly keep track with with the different there's a new version of this and that, and then you have to 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 also not on every tool, I think, but on like core tools which are leading the way. And I think this is the the task every designer at the moment should proceed to to embrace this new technology. So, <laughs> you call it embrace the technology. Um, I would say it's uh, getting out of the comfort zone and just upgrading the knowledge uh, also for all people who are really successful already and who've used tools for such a long time. Um, I think it's all the time for us to take the next step, not just the AI tools that are out there. Yeah. Um, and Please go ahead. And it's absolutely worth it. So because 
when you once you have started you you have this never stop exploring moment where you want to to see this and that and compare things and also work out your routines and and implement this in the end into your working progress and and what i have what we see here is just a simulation so this is just an example of what is possible at the moment so i think this we can repeat this conversation like in two months or something so this this is constantly <laughs> constantly evolving it is you mentioned the ai dilemma at the very beginning at this talk i posted the links to it in the chat they have a they show multiple outcomes of where this whole AI topic should go. So maybe it would be really worth it to talk about it again in a couple of months to see where we stand. Um, because pretty much anything is possible. Yeah, and, and I, I think I have also seen uh, from the from my colleagues also that you have these three uh, types of, of people dealing with AI. So you have the doomers where everything is, is going to an end and you have the the pragmatists and then you have the maximalists which also plan their journey with uh, the trip with with chat gpt and and this is quite interesting that that people who are working as a developer uh, often or sometimes are not very confident with the outcome and 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 so this these are also very very interesting discussions we have so this is and and uh, also look forward to have like we now have like a, a very fast pace on the on the on the side of of application and use but i think from my point of view th there's a lack of of theoretical approach of this topic so i would i would love to to attend a few lectures in the near future of of people who are like making ideas of what is behind all of this and where does it lead. So this is like the, the two sides of the story. I agree. I can recommend a paper written by, I think, Microsoft, which I read recently. It's a scientific one, which was really good. Um, I have tons of questions and we have about one minute left. So <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we definitely need to pick up this topic again. First of all, of course, on the skills that are needed in the future of what it, does it mean to curate a huge amount of images, but also um, which role plays time in a generation? Because currently anything we do takes a while and people also need time to process things. AI has the potential to do things so fast we can't even keep up. Um, what's your approach on this? Do you think we, we will also upgrade our brain cap capacities at some point or do we just need to lean back and enjoy the AI show maybe at some point? No, I, I think I think there will be a general lift up in the in the quality of the output and 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 less uh, the less the, the, the time question because uh, this is a is an optimization of of the of the output itself so so this is like like going from from the the screwdriver to the to the drill because because it optimizes a lot of of things but you still need the human eye to to control the output that it's it's really perfect so this you will never lose i agree so no need to fear for anyone who's in the design scene. AI will be our companion in the future. So a bright future to come, right? Yes, definitely. Gustav, it was a pleasure as always. Thank you so much for this lovely chat. Um, thanks to everyone in the chat on YouTube and Behance. It was lovely to have you all. In case you have follow-up questions, feel free to um, send them on the Adobe Discord. We have multiple ones for Firefly, but also Adobe Live. Um, and I'm sure Christoph will be happy to answer questions afterwards too. Um, yes, of course. Keep an eye on updates because uh, doors to new features and cool things to come will open very soon. Um, have a good afternoon. Enjoy the sunshine, hopefully outside. 
I will finish this with a German goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald. Tschüssi. Bye, thank you.